Hello everyone, and welcome to Dharma Dhaba. In our last video, we looked at who is responsible for climate change. Here's the list. In this video, we'll look at global climate change efforts. When did we start and where are we now? Climate change began and proliferated with Western nations' addiction to consumption. So we're going to treat it just that way. We'll use four of the six stages of addiction recovery according to the book Changing for Good to go through the stages of climate change effort around the world. Now, the first stage of addiction recovery is pre-contemplation. This is that stage where you aren't considering change and are completely unaware of the negative consequences of your actions. Europeans and their descendants colonized the world extracted irreplaceable resources and polluted the atmosphere to develop themselves, and now lived a 24-7 party thinking this could go on forever. Then, scientists noticed something was fishy. Or not fishy, because of all the disappearing fish. The UN held the first major climate meeting in 1972. The family and friends of the addicts gathered around to tell them about the damage they're causing. For a brief period after the conference, the West, unused to criticism, was shocked that countries called them out. The New York Times reported that, among the unexpected developments was the bluntness with which newer nations taxed the advanced economies with the prime responsibility for global environmental deterioration. So the West said, we'll think about it. And think about it they did. The second stage of addiction recovery is contemplation, where you begin to think about the problem but aren't motivated to change. This was the Rio Earth Summit of 1992. Developing countries used data to convince the West of its role in climate change, and Europe was kind of on board. The biggest addict in the room was not happy. The American president, H.W. Bush, threatened to throw away the conference saying, the American way of life is not up for negotiation. The American way of life meant that with 5% of the world's population, the US was responsible for a quarter of all global emissions. Due to US pressure, no hard deadlines came of the conference, but the summit's success was in the world accepting the West's role in climate change. This was all well and good at the meeting, but as soon as everyone left the room, the West threw a fit. The Economist published a 1992 report which said climate change has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. The root cause of this damage is a combination of population growth and poverty in the third world. Considering the reach of Western media, it isn't a surprise that many people still believe this today. Behind the scenes, the West tried to clean its hands of responsibility using its weight in international institutions. Lawrence Summers, the chief economist of the World Bank, said in 1991, Shouldn't the World Bank be encouraging more migration of dirty industries to the least developed countries? The economic logic behind dumping a load of toxic waste in the lowest wage country is impeccable. While the public was fooled, the scientific community wasn't. Gradually, the mainstream shifted closer to the truth. That brings us to the preparation stage of addiction recovery, where you conclude that your behavior is a negative and plan steps for change. This was the Kyoto Protocol of 1997. Knowing that rich countries are responsible for climate change, the Kyoto Agreement set up hard targets on rich countries to reduce emissions. Europe and Australia signed up, but North America backed out. The developing world could focus on growth while rich nations focused on paying off their carbon debt. This is great, right? Except for the US, most of the world is on the same page. Finally, this brings us to the action stage. This is where you take your first steps towards meaningful change. This is the stage we're in now, coinciding with the Paris Climate Accords of 2015. Generally speaking, according to the Paris Agreements, everyone is expected to make efforts to hit a two-degree climate change goal. To find out how each country is doing, 
we can head over to the Climate Action Tracker, an independent scientific analysis on climate efforts. This is global data as of March 2020. We don't have time to cover the details of each country in this video, but here are some notable mentions. The United States and Russia are doing everything wrong, putting everyone in danger of a world that's more than 4 degrees hotter. They're the chronic addicts who burn the building down. China, Japan and Europe are somewhere in between, going for roughly a 3 degree risk of change. They want to kick their addiction problem, but it's tough when it feels so good. The only major nation that is meeting its targets is India, which is compatible to be below the 2 degree mark. Though India can't even afford the addiction in the first place, am I right? Just kidding, India being yellow is largely due to climate change efforts, but that's something we'll cover in a later video. The most tragic thing about this graph is that no one is a role model. There's food for thought. Or no food for thought, because of all the disappearing fish. In an upcoming video, we'll look at each region's climate change efforts individually. I'm your host, Ashrit, and thanks for tuning in to Dharma Bhava.